Right, welcome back to another episode of Testing the Tips, where I, as an average golfer, test some of the, uh, well, the, the, the tips that I've had the most success from when I've tried out some of the leading YouTubers out there, the golf tuition that uh, I, like you, reach for when things aren't going too well. And today's lesson comes from Danny Maud, the man that sits at the top of the pile, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, golf tuition. It's a real interesting lesson or tip that I'm going to uh, have used many times before. And the reason I've come back to it is when my game starts to drop a little bit, when my iron striking starts to drop a little bit, there's always one main reason, and it's to do with the ability to control my low point. And it's majorly important, and I've come back to this tip and already seen huge success. First of all, there's been many videos about low point, but it's really important that you understand what that element of the golf swing is and what it looks like. And to help me explain, I've got two alignment sticks along the four running parallel. Two positions, the first one being where my ball is going to be positioned within my stance. I'm in the 9-9, it's pretty much centre of stance is where I would be looking uh, to locate the, the ball position. But the second alignment stick is where my low point is going to be, or intended to be. And that low point is within the swing, within the arc, at some point you will find the lowest point of your swing. It's the moment when the club head is effectively extended the furthest away from the body at this impact location. And generally that will be directly, if you draw a line from under the armpit down to the club now, you will ordinarily find that will be the low point. So although we're striking the ball here, the low point with irons needs to be after the ball. And being able to control that low point is key. Quite simply, if the low point is behind the ball with an iron, the fact is you're going to hit the ground, you're going to chunk your shots. Very, very simple. On the opposite, you can also start to come up and lift that low point from behind the ball and thin it. You've got to ensure that you're trying to compress the ball with your irons as best as possible. I talked about my own problems and what I tend to notice when my iron strike starts to become gradually weaker, the tendency is my low point will be moving further back and I'll start to be hitting a ball on the bottom grooves, won't be compressing and there won't be any divot whatsoever. And a divot should always be striking a ball first, divot comes after when you've hit the ball. So I've got this sort of strange situation set up where once we've understood what the low point is, Danny Maud takes you into a bunker to effectively do what I'm going to try and set up here. And uh, I always say, this is my interpretation of Danny's video, and some of the terminology mightn't be quite correct, and it's important that you go and have a look at Danny's video, and as ever, the links will be uh, in the description below. But essentially what Danny's trying to get you to do is this. Take your um, position of the ball, so the address position is the words I'm looking for. That's where I'd locate my ball. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to miss the first tee and I'm trying to hit the second tee. So you'll notice, and I'm going to push these down just a tad actually because they're a little bit raised for what I want. So what we're looking to do is this is our ball position, but we want our low point to be that second tee. So we're trying to shift ourselves to make sure that when we come down, we're hitting, entering into here, compressing the ball and hitting the tee. So take my address position. My concentration is simple. Miss the first tee, hit the second one. I mean, actually just, that's probably, I mean, you can even see a, uh, a, a little bit of a uh, scuff on the ground, which indicates exactly where I hit the ball, which is on top of the first tee, and then you'll see that the second tee flew out of the ground. And all you're looking to do is make sure you control that low point. It seems, and I've explained it to a number of people I've played golf with, my daughter behind the camera, my nephew have been learning to play. This concept is great for understanding um, or getting control of your club head. It seems quite simple, but try this for yourself and just see exactly where you're delivering that iron. And uh, you might be quite surprised. So in that same position again, all I'm looking to do, miss the first tee and hit the second one. Now still for me, I'm achieving that, but I'm still not hitting the descending blow that I would like. So let's just try that one more time. That's better. That's much better and already I'm never going to be someone I don't think who's going to take a, a sort of 
three quarter of an inch uh, divot. I'm always going to be a, a picker to a degree, but what it certainly does is it shifts my low point very much from behind the ball to after it. And for me, it's hugely important because it makes a massive difference to how I contact with the ball. Now, you can set this up as many times as you want in a row, find a sort of quiet position, which is what we've done, and uh, we're not looking to dig holes in fairways, but try and find a little quiet position. Get your normal swing and make sure that you're missing that first tee and your target. So this is where I'm addressed to. Again, much better. Each one has slightly moved forward. I'm going to try that now with a golf ball in place. Same theory, same kind of setup, and see what it does, because what happens is, if you do this correctly, you'll notice a much more solid contact with your iron strikes. And that's what it's done for me. Since I watched the video, I thought, I know that I've let this slip a little bit and I had immediate results. So my focus now is not so much the ball. I've got my vision sort of three or four inches in front of the ball. And that's what I'm trying to make as my contact point. A real, look how solid that is. I'm really super pleased with, again, if I look at, and if we can get a camera in later, if we look at where the T is, and we look at the sort of, uh, the scuff mark, I won't call it a divot, because it didn't quite achieve that, you can see that's clearly after the ball. If we had Trackman, that would be telling us our low point has become after the ball and not before it, and that's so, so key to making sure that you get far better iron strikes. So for me, great drill, slightly different than the one I'm going to link you to in the description to Danny's video. He does it in a bunker. I'm not sure that uh, too many green staff would be happy if I was digging up bunkers right now. But same principles, get that low point, concentrate on it, try the drill, and I assure you it will make a, a dramatic improvement to your iron strikes. Right, that's me done. Thanks for watching. Give me a feedback, let me know. Uh, we're sort of back on the scene with this test in the tips. This will be posted both on uh, the main channel, the Average Golfer channel, but also the test in the tips channel is now back up and live again. So make sure you subscribe to that as well if you only want to see uh, sort of tip tuition content only. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Good luck.